everyone in this video we are going to learn how to create a virtual machine of linux on your system so for making this particular video i booted into windows system and uh, i'm going to show you how to set up this tool named the virtual box and how to set up a virtual machine a linux machine on it which you can use to follow uh, the entire course if you don't have a linux system so this tool is open source, VirtualBox. It's open source, that means it's totally free to use and it's available on Mac and Windows both. Um, I'm assuming if you are uh, creating a virtual machine, uh, then you would definitely not have a, a Linux machine to follow the course. So, um, so for this particular example, I downloaded the, so you need to come to this website. I will put the description, uh, link into the description as you, you need to download the, uh, particular package for your particular system. Like in my case, I downloaded the Windows one, right? And here I am installing it. Here is the installer. I thought I should install it in front of you. So it's simply a click, 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 click. Nothing fancy, nothing difficult, right? All you need to do is to press next button and everything default is required to install it. In the meanwhile, while it's installing, let's talk about uh, the OS which I am recommending for following this course. So basically, um, virtual machines are the machines that are going to reside inside your main machine or the host machine. So um, in case you don't have a very beefy or a fancy system, uh, uh, it would make your system slow, right? So therefore, I recommend a Linux distribution which is lightweight. And uh, that one is Linux Mint. And even in Linux Mint, I recommend this XFCE edition. Uh, you need to download it from here. I have already downloaded the ISO file. It's upon you. You download it directly or you download it by using Torrent. It's also totally free. I will put this link also into the description, right? It's linuxmint.com slash downloads.php. Okay. So the good thing about this particular distribution is that it looks like Windows. It's very similar to Windows uh, Vista, right? The old school one. Uh, so, uh, and moreover, if you talk about the entire course, that is uh, going to be exactly the similar one. If this one is based on Ubuntu and the entire course is, will be instructed on a Ubuntu machine. So, if the virtual box is installed, let's move towards uh, creating the machine. Okay, so it's launched up. When it will launch, it will look something like this. Let me zoom. Okay, let's call it. Create on new, name it Linux or anything nice, Linux machine. I set it to Ubuntu, Linux, and select Ubuntu. 64 or 32 bit, depending upon what you have downloaded and what your system supports. And then this is the RAM size you want to allocate to your machine. I set it to 2 gigs. I recommend you to do the same. Then talking about the type of virtual machine, I would, uh, type of hard drive or virtual hard disk, I would recommend you to not make any changes to the default. This is the size of storage which you will allow your machine to have. Let's make it 30 gigs. Don't worry, the default setting makes are such that they are not going to occupy the space on your hard drive uh, until unless something is added to the machine. So it's going to take like 10 gigs in the beginning and then as you will keep on adding stuff into that, that would start to reflect into your main drive or SSD. Click next and that's it. So machine is ready. Double click on it. Now you need to select the ISO file so that the booting up process or installation process gets started. Uh, it's, it's, it's appeared on the next screen. So I moved it here. Click here, add. In my case, I have downloaded it into the data. Select it. I choose it. I click the start button. So here it is, it's going to start, let's start it, click enter, and the installation process will start begin. Let's wait for a few seconds and it would ask you to make some um, selections, which I'm going to teach you, and then the installation process will start, um, and it will complete without any uh, test. Okay. So here we are. The good thing about Linux is that it allows you to test on a machine without installing it, right? So that is the case. It's currently in the test mode. Click on install Linux Mint. 
you can increase the size of it or basically make it on full screen. I don't want to do that right now. Waiting for it to launch. So here, select your language. In my case, it's English. I keep it to US English. The keyboard layout is usually the US one, which is in my case. If you look, if you live in some country like UK, then you should need to change that. This is for the multimedia one. I recommend you to do that in case you want to explore it with GUI. Otherwise, you can leave it without that because the command line don't require these things. Click the continue button. Preparing Ubuntu drivers. Okay, you may increase the number of cores and the RAM size to to make it more powerful one in the past one, but uh, in case you have some extra cores and uh, RAM available on your system, but two gigs and this stuff is also enough. So select erase it because we don't have anything installed on our machine. The second one is a complex option. Okay. We, well, that is not the part of this course. I may make a video on that in some other advanced course, but just leave it for time. I have a pretty uh, decent system. I usually give it these two cores. Okay. And at the end of this video, I will uh, show how to increase the number of cores. You can allot the virtual cores, you can allot to the machine, and moreover, how to add extra network into the machine. There's one more thing you can do uh, on Windows that is, uh, you can make use of. Um, Linux support provided by Windows, right? Okay, give it a suitable name. Uh, there will be a separate video on that. Okay, give it some password. Okay, then continue. And that's it. So it will start installing from here. And once it gets installed, it would boot up. Right? So I stop. The installation process here. I turn off the window for the. Uh, I turn off the machine for the time being to show you the other stuff. Uh, but there's no other option that you need to select after this point. It, it may take around 10 to 15 minutes to install, depending upon your system. So we turn it off, I power it off, because I have to show you how to increase the number of cores and uh, add. Uh, some extra network, right? Click here, go to settings, come to system, processors. I recommend you to set at least two. In my case, I have eight. If you have four cores, four virtual cores, then don't increase it to two. Okay, do that. Another setting which I recommend is enable this and bridge adapter and, and, and bridge your Wi Fi or Ethernet with it. Well, why that is important? That is important because if you will do this, this machine would start appearing on your network like it's an actual machine on your network. And in the future, in, in some coming up videos, I will teach you how to do SSH and other stuff for that. This is required. Right? Now, if I boot this machine from this stage, it would have two cores and two networks. One would be its own virtual network. The second one would be the bridge network, which would be appear like the like the network of my Wi-Fi appearing in this machine. Well, that is it for this video. Uh, let's meet in another one.